Hi everyone, it's Vivian. Welcome to another episode of Sitting It With The Vet. This is another one of my finished objects videos. So hello and welcome to any new subscribers and hello and welcome back to all my existing subscribers. Thank you for returning. First of all, for those of you who are new, my name is Vivian and I'm known across social media as Vivette B1. I live in the South of England with my partner Sean and our cat Bonnie and this is my little podcast channel. So the sort of podcasts that I do are finished objects one. Um, I don't really go into all my wits and what I've purchased or anything like that. I just do them as finished objects at the end uh, when they're done. So the first ones that I have to talk to you today is some more socks. So for those of you that know me, I love to knit socks. and They are my go-to evening relaxation, knitting around vanilla socks are my, are my relaxation knit when I don't have to concentrate. So I've always got a pair of socks on the go. So these ones are knit in the King Cole zigzag in the Gin Fizz colourway and I teamed them for the, the cuff and heels with the West Yorkshire spinners in their bright red. I don't think that's got a name, I think it's got a number, but it's one that I use a lot so I've got about 40 grams left where I've used it in various different socks. So I just do a vanilla cuff down sock, I use 2.5mm needles and a 64 stitch count for myself. Um, and I finish it off with a slightly rounded toe. I don't, I'm not a fan of the, what I call the square toe. It doesn't fit me so well. Whereas this one is from Mina Phillips, Philip, the Knitting X Pack. And it's her slightly more rounded toe. So that is my socks. I do have two. But as usual, I've only put one on a sock blocker. So that is my first finished object. So like I say, King Cole zigzag in the Gin Fizz colourway, teamed with West Yorkshire spinners. My second pair, um, finished object is a pair of fingerless mitts. I shall just demonstrate by wearing one. So that's them there. This The mitten pattern is called the Theodora mitts. It's a pattern on Ravelry and I will link to it. The colours that I use for this one are... Anti Valentine by Stranded Eye Works and Raspberry Kisses by Serene Yarns and I'll link to both of them down below. So that's just a pair of those. Um, I use, I knit these to, I'm not a fan of mittens or gloves but I do like a fingerless mitt. And I knit these to go with my next finished object and also to go with a shawl that I've shown you before called the Elysian Shawl by Mina Phillip. Um, and that was a, um, a two coloured Ribbon, fisherman's rib shawl that I will put a picture up of me wearing all of them together just round about here. So my next finished object which links very nicely with my gloves is my Lexis hat. So this is knit in the anti-valentine colourway that then is on the cuff. This yarn I've had in my stash for ages. I bought it from Amy who is Stranded Dye Works maybe about 2015, 2016, and I've just been waiting for the perfect project for it to come up against. I'm one of these people that if I see a beautiful yarn, I will buy it when finances allow and wait for the project to come up. I don't buy it with a particular project in mind because quite often if I do that, I find that I start a project and then I fall out of love with it. Whereas if I buy a yarn, when a particular pattern or project comes up, then I will use it. So that's why I've had this one quite a while. But getting back to the hat, the hat is the Alexis hat. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and I will link to it again. Um, it's actually written for an Aran weight yarn. But what I did for this one was I went doubled up the fingering weight to make a DK, so using two strands at the same time. And I went down a needle size, so I went down to a 3.75 for the brim and a 4 for the main part of the body. But I knit the biggest size in the actual pattern. So... Normally I would knit the medium size for, for myself, but I knit the large size, but I used a smaller needle. But to complicate it even more, what I did was I said, where it said knit X amount of inches on the medium size, that's what I did. So sizing wise, in terms of the amount of inches that you knit, it's based on the medium size for the rim, brim, and also for the main body, but just with the number of stitches for the large size. So hopefully that will make sense to everyone. Um, but that's why I find that it, because it was the DK and I also went down the needle size, that made it fit better. So I knit this one to go with my gloves and my shawl. 
and then I knit another one. So I enjoyed knitting it so much, and again, it's once once you get the pattern in your head, because it's only a four row repeat, it's really, really easy to follow. So I then knit a second one. If I bring it closer, again, I used a fingering weight yarn, held double. And this yarn is called Ice Jewel by Cast Yarns. This was dyed using the ice dye method a couple of years ago when we had really bad snow. So Saz, who is the dye behind Carl, she did some one of a kinds using the ice dye method because with an ice dye method, you can't really control how it's going to come out because it really depends on how the ice melts and the, the dye melts with it. But it's like I say, it's got a really lovely mild effect and you've got purples and teals and blues and greens in here. I think you better cut, get a better colour if I hold it further back. Um, so again, exactly the same. I knit the stitch count for the largest side, but I knit the actual dimensions based on the medium size. And so I now have two of these. I have knit this hat before using the actual Aran weight. Um, I knit it for Sean's mum a couple of years ago as her Christ one of her Christmas presents. And in the Aran weight, it's really nice. I used a, a James C. Brett Aztec for that one. Um, but I just fancied one because I wanted to use up some of these my beautiful hand-dyed yarns. So those are all of my knitted finished objects but I now have a couple of cross stitch finished objects as well so the first one I will show you if you've been following me on Instagram you would have seen that I did put some pictures of these up on Instagram so you may already have seen them so the first one is my owls um, I am a lover of owls I must admit I do have some other hand drawn paintings and paintings of owls and I quite often make project bags of owls so I fancy doing a cross stitch of one and I'm really really pleased with how this has come out so the pattern itself, let me just put that down for a moment, came from this magazine here. It's a quarterly magazine and it's Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. Now, I found out about this magazine through Davina, who is Little Workroom Crafts, because she uses it a lot um, and she really, really, really raves about it. So I got it from the Patchwork Rabbit and again, I will link to the website. It's actually an American one, so you have to wait for it to, to basically come across the sea. Um, but the Patriot Rabbit gets them in stock and then she sends them out to you. So we're always a couple of weeks behind release with it being released in the States. Um, so I'm just waiting for the Christmas bumper edition to come out now. So this is it here, and I'll give you a quick look. So that's some of the patterns that you get on back. So it combines both punch needle and cross stitch, or primitive stitching as they call it. Um, but they have some like really really lovely ones so that's just another one so anyone who is into cross stitching and that and punch needle and it gives you all the charts and it gives you you know um suggested yarn colors and dmc or anchor or whatever and it's all by different designers but it is a really lovely really lovely magazine so like i say i'm waiting for the christmas one to come out so with this particular project I did some, um, this is white Ada, but I dyed it using the tea and coffee method. And again, I will link to the video tutorial that I used. I can't remember the name of the people, but I will link to it. And all the yarns, I had a DMC yarns that I actually used from Stash. So they are just slightly different from the ones that are recommended in the magazine. Mainly this one here, because in the magazine, it's a much more orange, like a pumpkin orange. Whereas I didn't have that, so mine's much more corally orange. But I think it works just as well and I just didn't use the exact colours but it's near enough the same as to what it is in the picture and then I just framed it and I used the lace method for framing at the back so anyone who's cross stitcher that is where you lace it at the back to pull it tight um, I found that for again through a couple of tutorials Fancy Lady Stitches has one and I'll link to that tutorial below as well um, but no I'm really really pleased with this so I think this is going to be on the mantelpiece for quite a while so that's my other, my, one of my other cross stitches. Now I have a second cross stitch finished project. And I'm going to handle this one very gently because I don't want to get you dirty. And this is Sean's mum's Christmas card. So it's um, two poncettias with the words with love. And it actually comes, and then just that inside. So the actual pattern I got off of Pinterest. And then the wording, I have a cross stitch book that has letters in it, so I just use that one. And then the card, I actually had from a while back when I used to do cards before, 
cross stitch cards before and it's just one that I had in stash um, and the wording is just very simply typed and then printed off on some A4 paper and then just held in place with double sided sticky tape believe it or not um, so yes that's going to be um, Sean's mum's Christmas card so again all the colours are from stash just to get some some nice reds and that in there so I'm really pleased with that one but I'm not going to handle it too much because I don't want to get dirty finger marks out of it and for that one I did slightly different in actual um, mounting it in that I ironed on I, I put the front of it down onto a towel and it, to keep the stitch definition and then I ironed on some lightweight interf interfacing just to give it a little bit of stiffness and it made it much easier to put inside the card that's something that I've done before so that's quite a, that's just one of my little tips um, if you're doing cards or anything like that, I found by actually putting it on the back of a, some interfacing, um, it actually made it easier to actually place in the card. So that is all of my finished objects for now. I do have some more things on the go. I have a test knit on the go, which I will show you that once it's published. And I also have, obviously, some more socks and a couple of other things, a shawl and a cardigan. But they're quite big projects, so they're taking a little bit longer. So it's just a quick one for me. So I'd just like to say take care, stay safe everybody and I will catch up with you soon with another finished objects video. Bye bye for now. Bye.